The 7 o'clock news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. Representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the efforts of His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, to help brotherly and friendly countries across the world. His Highness said the Royal Humanitarian Initiatives reflect Bahrain's endeavor to boost international solidarity. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out the great support accorded to the Royal Humanitarian Foundation by the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad affirmed Bahrain's support to the Afghan people. In their humanitarian crisis, wishing Afghanistan peace and prosperity and its people's security and stability. This came on the occasion of the visit paid by a delegation from the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, led by its Secretary General, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, to the Afghan capital, Kabul, to deliver relief aid to the people affected by the earthquake. The Minister of Oil and the Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohamed bin Dana, stressed the role of the Prime Minister's program for the development of governmental cadres, which embodies the ambitious vision of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to develop a government cadres and provide them with the opportunity to enhance their expertise and skills and participate in achieving sustainable development goals for the Kingdom of Bahrain. During his meeting with the seventh patch of the Prime Minister's program for the development of governmental cadres, the Minister praised their participation in various projects and programs and training courses that enhance and refine their skills and develop their practical experiences in a way that enhances their contributions to the development of government performance. Dr. Bendena reviewed with the fellowship candidates their various topics related to the oil and environmental sector, highlighting the most important responsibilities assigned to the Ministry of Oil and the Environment to develop sustainable policies for the oil and environment sector, to provide licenses for petroleum activities, inspection services for refueling stations, and to attract specialized oil companies to enhance the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a regional center for organizing various events. He also reviewed the role of the executive body of the Supreme Council for the Environment, headed by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the tasks it performs in order to preserve the environment in addition to the most important challenges facing the world in general and the Kingdom of Bahrain with climate change and environmental issues. The Minister of Oil and Environment also reviewed the most important achievements in oil and environmental projects, mainly the modernization project of the Bahrain Bahrain refinery, which is considered one of the largest and most important strategic projects in the Bahrain petroleum company Bobco, which aims to increase the refining capacity to increase the competitiveness of the refinery. The Prime Minister's Office today announced the applications for the 8th intake of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Program, which will open between the 13th of August to the 13th of September of 2022. The Director General of the Prime Minister's Office, Hamad Yagoub al Mahmid, highlighted the Fellowship Program reflects the far-reaching visions of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, with the objective of strengthening and developing the Kingdom's human capital. Al Mahmid emphasized His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's commitment to investing in the Kingdom's national workforce as Bahraini citizens are a key asset to the Kingdom's ongoing development. Al Mahmid noted the previous fellows' contributions in furthering public sector work streams and achieving the Kingdom's wide-ranging development goals. Al Mahmid highlighted that the Prime Minister Fellowship attracts young Bahraini professionals working in the public sector and is a competitive, challenging year-long training program that upskills and reskills young leaders through increased exposure to the Kingdom's decision makers and the decision-making process. Government employees below managerial levels can apply via the PMO's website, pmo.gov. .bh. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma bint Ja'far al sarafi held a meeting with the CEO of the General Entertainment Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Faisal Said. During the meeting, both sides agreed to enhance cooperation in the field of entertainment between the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority in Bahrain and the General Entertainment Authority in Saudi Arabia. al sarafi affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to develop the bilateral partnership in tourism and entertainment activities with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and to raise their partnership to new levels during the next stage. She also noted that the entertainment industry is considered one of the main growth pillars in the two countries, expressing her aspirations to mutually benefit from the expertise and capabilities available in the two countries. The minister stressed the keenness to develop exchange between the Bahraini and Saudi tourism markets in a manner that contributes to supporting and accelerating economic recovery in all sectors. 
Aluminum Bahrain, Alba, has reported a profit of 181.9 million Bahraini dinars for the second quarter of 2022, up by 97% over year 2021. Alba's top line were driven by higher LME prices despite flat growth in sales volume, while the bottom line for the second quarter and first quarter 2022 was driven by the higher top line and partially impacted by higher costs and distribution expenses. Total comprehensive income stood at 201.9 million Bahraini dinars, up 123% from 90.7 million in the prior year quarter. Gross profit rose 68 percent to 208 million from 123.7 million Bahraini dinars in the year ago quarter. Now, people who hold a tourist visa to visit Saudi Arabia can now perform Umrah during their stay in the country. The Ministry of Hajj and Umrah announced that citizens of 49 countries who can apply for a tourist visa online will benefit from the service, noting that those eligible for e-visas can also obtain a tourist visa upon their arrival at airports in the kingdom. The ministry also said that the holders of U.S., U.K. and Schengen visas also qualify to perform Umrah while visiting Saudi Arabia, adding that people who hold family visit visas can also apply to perform Umrah while in the kingdom. An exhibition exploring Saudi Arabia's ambitious The Line project is leading, leaving visitors enthralled thanks to the work of specialist tour guides. The details of the Neum project are one on full display at the exhibition hosted at the Jeddah Superdome. Visitors of all age groups will get first-hand insights with the help of the Saudi tour guides who explain visual displays in both Arabic and English. The guides are bringing the exhibition to life with about 49 tours per day, allowing visitors to grasp the scope and complexity of the project's designs, architectural concepts and engineering capabilities. The Jeddah exhibition opens its doors from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. until August the 14th before moving to the eastern province and then staying in Riyadh. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi announced a cabinet reshuffle to improve his administration's performance as it faces towering economic challenges. The cabinet shake-up, which was approved by parliament in an emergency session, affected 13 portfolios including health, education, culture, local development and irrigation ministries. Also included in the reshuffle was the tourism portfolio, a key job at a time when Egypt is struggling to revive the lucrative sector decimated by years of turmoil, the pandemic and most recently the Russia-Ukraine war. The changes, however, did not affect key ministries including including foreign finance, defense and the interior, which is responsible for the police force. The U.S. State Department announced that its special envoy to Yemen will travel to the Gulf region this week to help extend the truce in the war-torn nation. Tim Linderking will travel to the United Arab Emirates, Oman and Saudi Arabia starting August 11th, while members of his team travel to Jordan hoping to secure an expansion of the U.N.-mediated truce between Yemen's warring parties. The State Department said the efforts aim to pave the way for a permanent ceasefire and an exclusive durable Yemeni-led resolution to the conflict.